We regulate any stealing of his property. We're damn good, too. But you can't be any geek off the street. Gotta be handy with the steal, if you know what I mean, earn you keep. This is not clickbait. And the end is just as messed up as the beginning and the middle. So let me set the story up for you because you need to understand the frame of mind that I was in to understand why I reacted the way I reacted. Well back then I was a company team driver and we were down in South Texas and I was the night guy. Uh, also we loaded our own trailers and I was the guy that went inside the trailer in the negative 22 degree Fahrenheit by the way, uh, and built the pallets, moved the pallets in, set them up, load locked them down, yada, yada, yada. It was over 100 degrees that day. I drove in the night before and got very little sleep, and then I was up all day because we had four stops. We had four pickups that day to make. I had to drive up from South Texas to get to San Antonio uh, to my pickup for the next morning. Along the way, <laughs> Mind you, I'm, on, I'm not on much sleep, so you have to forgive me. But along the way, we stopped at a Love's. We stopped to get some coffee. The entire time, I'm not kidding you, this is not an exaggeration, every two to three minutes, the lady that was working inside, who was just doing her job, was coming over the loudspeaker saying, All trucks, please move forward as people behind you would like to get fuel. Dancing on my nerves. I was tired. So I get down the road and I'm headed towards San Antonio. And I'm driving along and there, at this point in time, there are, I, there's five lanes, okay, five. I'm in the fourth lane, so I'm right next to the hammer lane or the fast lane. So I'm in that fourth lane and I see a car enter the freeway and dart over three lanes without using a turn signal. So I knew that I needed to keep an eye on him. I mean, there's not a lot of traffic, but I needed to watch. I mean, that's, that's pretty dangerous driving, right? So as he's coming up, and I see that he kind of swerves and almost hits the rear of my trailer. I'm like, great, you know, this is the last thing I need to deal with. It's been a long day already. So I'm really keeping an eye on him now. And then as he's working his way up towards the front of my trailer, he does it again. He almost hits my trailer. Now I'm getting irritated. I, I, I can't get over. You're not supposed to be in that far left-hand lane. So I'm just having to watch. My co-driver says, man, that's a cop. Like, are you serious? He's inching his way forward now. And now as he gets beside my truck, he almost hits my truck. My co-driver who's looking at him, he says, man, that guy's on his computer pretty sure you're not supposed to be on your computer while you're driving down the road, but I don't know. I'm not a cop. As he swerves, or right after he swerves and almost hits the truck, I beep the horn at him. I mean, he's almost hit me three times. You know, now it's just the horn on the steering wheel, which is just a regular type horn, just like every other vehicle has. And I just beep it. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to uh, get him to pull me over or anything. So I'm, I'm assuming that that's gonna be the end of it and he's going to realize, hey, I'm driving like a jerk. But he, he speeds up even more and there's a car in front of him. So he cuts over and cuts me off with less than a car length between me and him, once again without using his blinker. You know, this is getting a little ridiculous, but now he's speeding up and I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is gonna be the end of it but he cuts off the car that was in front of him without using his blinker. And then he swerves back over into my lane once again without using his blinker. So 10 or 15 seconds goes by and then from the fourth lane, he exits the freeway. I can't contain myself. I watch in slow motion as my hand goes up to the air horn and just blasts on it. I let him have it. I see this guy slam on his brakes and as I'm going by, I'm thinking, well, what can he really do? He's on the off ramp. My co-driver says he's backing up on the freeway. What? 
this guy backs up on the freeway, chases me down, pulls me over. It's illegal to use your air horn inside city limits. I know this. I know what's coming. And he walks up, license and insurance. So I hand it to him. You wanted my attention? You got it now, boy. Follow me, this is unsafe. <laughs> I've made this guy angry. He gets in his car. He leads me off of the freeway. I'm on the northbound side. This guy takes a left and goes under the freeway to the other side, pulls in a parking lot, so that way I could follow him. And I guess apparently he was trying to screw me over and make it more difficult for me to get back onto the freeway. I think he thought that I was gonna continue northbound and keep going. Little did he know that was actually my exit that I needed. And I actually needed to go left. <laughs> so it worked out great for me. When I pull up and I stop, 30 minutes goes by before this guy walks up and uh, even says anything. So he walks up, 30 minutes later, I roll down my window, he asks me, he says, please step out of the vehicle. He used the word please. So I'm thinking, okay, enough time's gone by, he's probably, you know, he's, he's probably not as angry as he was before. And obviously I'm not as angry as I was before, so, I go ahead and I step out of the vehicle. I know I'm kind of in the wrong here, and I know this guy's mad at me. I don't want to perturb him anymore. So I get out of the vehicle. He says, I want to know why you honked at me. Now, at this point in time, like I said, 30 minutes have gone by. I've had enough time to cool down. I'm having a come to Jesus moment. I am okay. I'm going to just pray for forgiveness. Please forgive my sins. Forgive me, sir. So I tell him, sir, I didn't get much sleep last night. I've had a very, very long day. I shouldn't have honked at you. I apologize, I'm sorry. He said, no, I wanna know why you honked at me. And yes, he put his finger in my face. Oh. You know that point that you reach when you get bent and bent and bent, that's where I was at. I said, sir, you really wanna know? He said, yeah, I really wanna know. Okay. I said, I saw a car enter the freeway, cross three lanes of traffic without using a turn signal, then proceed to almost hit my trailer twice. Then when I realized as he was almost hitting my truck that it was a cop, who should be held to a higher standard of the law, I started to get a little angry. So that's whenever I tapped my normal horn at you. But you proceeded to still drive like a jack A and cut me off without using a blinker, which you could have caused an accident had you needed to hit your brakes, but you didn't think about that apparently. Then you went and you cut the other car off without using a blinker again. Then for no reason, you swerved back into my lane without using a blinker, then you exit four lanes of traffic off of a freeway without using a blinker. So that's why I honked my horn at you. He looked at me, didn't say a word, turned around and walked back to his car. Another 30 minutes goes by. He walks up, says, I need to see your logbook. I said, no problem. I said, I've got electronic logs. If you'd like to step up on the side of the cab, I'll be happy to show you the computer. He said, no. I need to see your log books. I need to see your paper log books. I said, sir, I don't have paper log books. I have a computer e-log. I'll be happy to show it to you or I can give him the computer and actually give him a card. We are required by DOT to carry a, a card that has instructions on how to work the computer because there's many different computers out here and I'm sure not all of them, all of them want to be trained or need to be trained to, to learn how to use them all when a simple card can give you the directions. Now, I also could have emailed them to him, but I don't need to do his job for him. Why would I give somebody the ability to incriminate me? Now, I fully believe that I was 100% in compliance. You know, I did a very good job as far as keeping up with my loads, making sure that, you know, I logged everything, always had my 15 minute pre-trip and post-trip because that's what the company required as well as my fueling. I fully believe I could have passed that inspection, but still, I don't need to give somebody 
a reason to try and find a way to incriminate me. And nor do I need to do this guy's job. He should know that I can email him those logs. But I'm not going to tell him that. So he said, do I need to call a DOT officer out here? And I'm starting to lose it, guys. I'm starting to lose it. I said, please do. Please get somebody out here that knows how to do their job. His face got red. He turned around and walked back to his car. Another 30 minutes goes by. He comes walking up, asks me to get out of the truck. I step down out of the truck. He says, do you know why I pulled you over? I said, yes, sir, I do. I was honking at you and that's illegal in city limits. He said, yeah. You were also doing 70 miles an hour in a 65. There's the real break point. Here's where I lose my cool. And I don't condone this behavior whatsoever. So I'm not proud of this story. <laughs> it's just a good story. So I said, you're an effing liar. He said, what? I said, do you need me to spell it out for you? You are an effing liar. He said, how is that with his smug look? I said, because it's impossible for me to do 70 miles an hour because my truck is governed at 62, you SOB. Now, of course, I'm keeping it a little clean for the channel, but you get the idea. When I told him that, his face went white. That told me, see, I have friends that are police officers and I know that they can't start writing a ticket. Once they start, they have to issue that ticket. You can't throw away that ticket. You can't get rid of the papers. You, it, it, it's there. It, there can't be any, any pages torn out. I mean, it's, it's done. That told me that he's already written the ticket. So now he's afraid. And let me tell you, everything changed. He said, hold on one second, sir. Walked back, to his, walked back to his car, came almost right back up. He said, sir, I've already written the ticket and I'm just gonna need you to sign the back. I said, I'm not signing that effing ticket. He said, sir, I don't wanna take you to jail. Please just sign the back of the ticket. I said, you can go yourself. I'm not signing that ticket. We go back and forth for, I don't know, a few minutes and my co-driver steps out of the truck. He's like, look, just sign the ticket. You know, you don't want to go to jail because if you go to jail, there's a possibility you may get fired and it would just be a nightmare. Plus you wouldn't get paid even if you were able to fight it and you were able to retain your job. You know, it's just not worth it. Just you can handle it in court. So he talks some sense into me. And thankfully, I listened to the voice of reason and I snatched the ticket out of his hand. I signed it, I gave it back to him, and I said, you're a sorry SOB, F you. And yeah, it was just, it wasn't pretty. So a month later, I set up the court date. Now I've already gotten a lawyer and I go into the courtroom and I'm sitting in the courtroom. I see this guy walk in. We locked eyes and there was recognition in those eyes. We recognized each other. I mean, when you have a two hour confrontation with somebody where you're cussing at each other, by the way, he was yelling and cussing at me too. When you're yelling and cussing and going back and forth and the adrenaline's pumping and you guys are about to just throw down, you don't forget that face. So I knew that he recognized me, but he walked to the front and started talking with somebody right after he walked in, my lawyer walked in, grabbed me, said, you don't need to be in for, here for this, went and sat me down. He walked back in the courtroom. 10 minutes later, he walks out, says, I got the charges dropped. I said, that's cool. How'd you do that? He said, oh, the officer didn't remember giving you a ticket. <laughs> and I laughed and I said, well, that's BS. And he said, how's that? I told him the story. He laughed. He said, this guy has been looked at by internal affairs. He said, he's got a jacket that thick. He's probably one string away from being fired. 
Now, I don't want to get anybody fired. Anybody can have a bad day. But at the same time, I don't want this guy to do anything to anybody else like this. I mean, this was just completely uncalled for. You know, I feel like as a professional truck driver, I am, it is my duty, it is my job to be a professional driver on the road. It, I, I should be held to a higher standard when on the road than just any other civilian. So I look at any any job that way and police officers are no different i believe they should abide by the law to a higher standard than anyone else they shouldn't have any slack there and so when i saw that this guy was driving like that i got super irritated now this was uh, quite a few years ago and I have grown since then and I've matured since then and like I said I don't condone this behavior I have friends that are police officers one bad apple police officer doesn't mean that all police officers are bad apples I love police officers I've had many good interactions with police officers I've been pulled over they've been super nice they've still written me tickets they haven't written me tickets you know it, it just it is what it is that guy could have been having a bad day so I don't want to get the guy fired, but at the same time, if he's got a jacket that thick, maybe he should be fired. But I just thought I'd share this story with you guys. Uh, you know, it, it's it just it is what it is. It, it was a, a bad day, and man, so you know, stay in control of your emotions. I appreciate you watching, guys. If you like this, give it a thumbs up, share the video out. That would be greatly appreciated. But always stay driven.